A little backstory. When I was 19, I lived with my mom in a ranch style house on a road that backed up to a large field. On the other side was the main highway. About half a mile down from me was a loony farmer, and about a mile on the other side of me was pretty much a crack house. I guess someone used to live there, but it was run down. I will say that the crackheads were pretty quiet. Other than those two houses, we were isolated. At the time, I was working full time and going to school full time. One of my classes ended at 10.30 p.m. I often wouldn't get home that day of the week until about 11.15ish. I was driving home one night and I noticed some guy walking down the road. He had a yellow shirt and track pants. I remember his outfit because it was stupid. It wasn't weird seeing people walk down my road because of the whole crack house thing, but I instinctively looked over at him when I drove past. He turned, smiled and waved, which freaked me the fuck out. So I sped the half mile home and pulled into the driveway weirded out. I made sure all the doors and windows were secure and then sat on the couch to be a paranoid freak and waited to make sure the dude walked past my house. Except he didn't. And there was another guy with him, dressed in darker clothes. They actually walked up my driveway and started playing around with my car, testing the handles and stuff. In my hurry, I forgot to grab my phone from my car, so I was kind of worried that that's what they were after, until the guy in yellow started approaching my door. I'm freaking out, so I go and I wake my mom up. She's blurry, and I'm trying to explain the situation when we both hear the doorknob turn very slowly. She got out of bed, walked to the door, and then yellow shirt knocked. I perched up on the couch so I could get a good look at him and his friend still in the driveway. Yeah? My mom said. You dropped your wallet. I told my mom that I had my wallet. It was in my purse. So she calmly told him that she had her wallet, and it was too late to be knocking on people's doors. I remember perfectly what he said next, even though this was about six years ago. Okay, I'm not a bad guy, just so you know. We were all pretty still. No one moved, not even the guy at the door, not even when the porch light went off. Then he tried the handle again. My mom told me to call the cops so she can get the gun, and I told her I didn't have my phone, so she walked to the kitchen to grab hers from the charger. She handed me the phone and walked to the bathroom, she stared out the window into the backyard, and then she went to her room to grab her Ruger. I was talking to the cops and explaining the situation, all while watching the two guys, explaining that there were two suspicious guys at our door, when my mom came back out and said, One in our backyard too! Which explained why she had looked out the bathroom window. She caught a glimpse of him from the kitchen and went to get a more discreet look. My mom walked back over to the door with her gun and loudly said, if he tries the handle again, I'm just going to open the door and shoot him. Who knows why she said that instead of waiting for the cops to arrive, but the guys took off down the road. I told her that she rushed to the bathroom where the guy in the backyard saw his friends running down the road and sprinted off too. They were going in the direction of the crack house. The cops searched our house and our yard and then went to the drug house where they found five dudes hanging around. One was the yellow shirt guy, and I'm assuming his friends were with him. They did get arrested, and nothing weird like that happened ever again, but I was on edge for a while. I still make sure the doors are locked at all times every day, even though I live in a much nicer area now. Anyway, sorry it was a bit anticlimactic. The dudes got caught. Either way, weird guys who told me you found my wallet. Let's not meet. This happened when I was a bartender about four years ago, but I think about it often as it has changed the way I operate throughout life. I now refuse to go to any store alone after midnight. For the story's sake, I will tell you that I was 25, attractive and slender at the time. On a busy Friday night, I was bartending with the bar manager and he had noticed that we were very low on some bar necessities after the dinner rush. So I was sent out to go to a 24 hour grocery store down the road to pick up the odds and ends that we were required to get us through the weekend. I picked up everything that was asked of me without trouble at the store until I got to the liquor aisle. There were two country looking guys there that were probably around my age in the aisle and they were staring at me and whispering to each other in a way that made me uncomfortable as I assumed they were making comments about me. All pretty innocent so far, 
Before they could approach me, I grabbed what I needed very quickly and power walked to the self-checkout. I really booked it out of there, because when you're a bartender, it's kind of like you are on stage and are required to be charming and interact with people that you otherwise absolutely wouldn't be able to tolerate unless you're getting paid to. I get to the self-checkout and hot on my tail are the two guys. I'm scanning my stuff and they use the scanning station next to me. I get a better look at them now that they are right next to me. One is taller, muscular, and average looking. The other is shorter and more plump. They both looked dirty and their eyes were completely bloodshot. Not sure if they were high on something or had already been drinking for a while. They continued to stare at me and our eyes awkwardly met. So I did the pleasant midwesterny thing to do and flashed them a quick half-assed closed-lipped smile to be polite. The taller one starts trying to talk to me. Hey, looks, looks like, like you're ready, ready to party, party, huh? I replied with something like, yeah, something like that. It's not for me though. They walk closer to me and ignore their responsibility to scan their items. Oh, must be for your boyfriend, huh? I flash the awkward tight-lipped smile again and roll my eyes slightly. Like, this is your hint that I'm not interested, fellas. The taller one continues to try to talk to me. You could come hang out with us tonight. We could show you a real good time if you know what I mean. I reply with, no thanks, I'm good, I have plans already. Well, the tall one starts to get upset that his moves aren't working like he'd hoped and starts using a more threatening tone and moves very close to me. Like two inches away, but I ignore him, staying focused on the scanner. I don't think he had showered in a few days by the smell of him. He gets a little louder and says, I see how it is. You probably only fuck doctors and rich men like that. You think you're too good for us. We can show you that you aren't. We can teach you a lesson. Now, I'm not sure in what context he meant, but it definitely wasn't good. Still not looking at him, I turn away so my body is blocking his view of my purse, which I set on the scanner, to grab my four inch pocket knife out and slid it up my jacket sleeve in case I need to protect myself, acting like I'm searching for my wallet. I do this, however, in view of the self-scan worker standing at her podium, and I look at her with wide eyes, trying to communicate that I do not feel safe and I might need help. I turn back to the machine and slid my card to pay while the creepy and hostile guys are practically standing on top of me. The machine malfunctions and starts beeping. The lady worker comes over immediately and the guys standing next to me change their expressions from, I am planning to torture you for a couple of days and toss your body into a creek to just your friendly good old country boys making polite conversation over here. They actually tried to act like I knew them and we were friends so the worker wouldn't be alerted to their ill intentions. They tried joking with the worker, saying I was stealing something and that's why the machine went off. The worker was definitely not buying it. She was a six foot plus tall woman, with some muscle on her by the way. I wouldn't mess with her on my best day. Anyways, she presses a few buttons on the screen, shooting the guys a very unimpressed look when they were trying to act charming and cancels the order completely. She turns to me and says, I am sorry for the inconvenience ma'am. This machine seems to not be working correctly. Why don't you gather your things and I will ring you up at an actual register? She puts her hand on my back and gives me a wide-eyed look like I gave her a minute earlier, letting me know that she sees I am in danger. I pick up my things to follow her to the register that is near the security office. The guys linger around the self-scan, still glaring at me, and eventually complete their purchase but stand at the exit, assuming they are waiting for me. I felt like I would be walking to my death if I made my exit in that moment. The worker keeps a close eye on the guys and scans my items. As she's scanning, she tells me there really wasn't anything wrong with the machine I was using. It just misread my credit card. She said, I had a bad feeling about those guys from the moment they walked in, and then I saw them getting aggressive towards you. I already rang security to be ready to walk out to the parking lot and make sure you left safely when you were ready to leave. Then I saw you take that knife out and put it up your sleeve, getting ready to protect yourself. Good girl. As much as I'd like to see you show them that they picked the wrong girl to mess with, I'm glad I was able to pull you aside and make sure you are safe. I see them waiting by the door for you. 
I'll just keep pressing buttons on the screen and act like I am having trouble with your order until they give up and go outside. Our security officer and I both are still going to escort you to your vehicle when you leave. I thought to myself, this woman seriously deserves a raise. I thanked her over and over again and told her what they said to me. I was getting afraid because I don't know what these guys are capable of. As I'm talking to her, my bar manager calls me to see what's taking so long. I explained what was happening and he was obviously very concerned and ready to come up there himself and kick some ass. By the time I hang up, the guys had given up and walked outside to the parking lot. The worker said to give it another few minutes because she had a feeling that they may still be in the parking lot waiting for me to walk out and see which vehicle was mine so they could follow me. My instant thought was, no way, they have to be gone by now. I was wrong. The worker and security guard escorted me out and as it was after midnight, you can imagine how empty the parking lot was. Towards the back of the lot, there sat an old big pickup truck running with the lights on pointed towards the store. It was a huge parking lot and it wouldn't have made sense for them to initially park like that. So I'm assuming they moved the truck to sit that way so they had a full view of when I exited the store to go to my vehicle. It was like being stalked by very hungry lions. When I unlocked my car, they saw that me, the worker, and the guard were looking directly at them and that I wasn't getting in my car until we watched them leave. They then peeled out of the parking lot. I mean, they seriously did a burnout to establish that they were pissed and trying to intimidate us or something. Aw, poor creeps didn't get their way. Boo hoo. I thanked the worker and the guard over and over again, as I am certain they had just saved my life, or at least saved me from having to live with whatever those guys were planning on doing to me. I did write a long letter to the store manager and to their corporate location describing how their employees protected me and how grateful I was. I really hope that earned her a promotion, bonus, or raise. She didn't know me at all and was ready to protect me, which really isn't her job, but she did it anyways. Needless to say, I do not go late night shopping by myself anymore. Never will again. <laughs> When I was younger, it was just me, my mom, and my younger brother until I turned 14. On the weekdays, my mom would drive about 30 minutes away to take care of a family with four kids from 10 in the morning until four in the afternoon. Sometimes at five, she would do a night shift at a diner further away. My brother and I were homeschooled, having tutors over three days a week for four hours each time. This left us mostly home alone. Our closest neighbors were around half a mile away and very few cars passed by. We lived in a small, old house and had three dogs at the time. Two German Shepherds and a Belgian Malinois, a protective working dog. Our yard wasn't fenced, so we spent most days on the porch with a fan on, doing homework or reading while the dogs played ball. After 5 p.m., we followed strict instructions from my mom to bring the dogs in, close the blinds and such. But sometimes, when bored or the dogs were too energetic, I'd play with them outside despite the small size of our house and the large size of the dogs. On a day when I knew my mom was working the night shift, my brother and I decided to play with the dogs. He went outside to get the fetch toys while I stayed inside with the barking dogs. I eventually stopped doing the dishes, pulled down the blinds, and looked outside. There, my brother was talking to a man who seemed to be urging him into his car. I screamed and rushed outside with the dogs right behind me. My smallest dog, Totoro, jumped on the man, barking fiercely. The other dogs joined in and I told my brother to go inside. I managed to get Totoro back inside with the other dogs and blocked the door with the dining table. I held a kitchen knife, frightened, along with the barking dogs. I remained on the couch, peeking through the blinds as the man glared at our house and was swearing. I was terrified he might enter and harm us. He eventually drove off and my mom arrived about 30 minutes later, although it felt much longer. My brother and I recounted the incident, explaining how the man had approached my brother, asking him to come see his puppy and leading him towards his car. We went to our neighbor's house and called the police. They questioned us, but my description was vague, mentioning only that the car was old and red and the man was tall and white. 
I spoke to my mom recently, and for the remainder of our time living there, a police car would drive down our street a few times a week. The officer who took my statement became close to our family. We spent time together, sharing meals, and he even took one of our dogs in when our apartment couldn't accommodate all of them. We've remained close even though we're now separated by five states. Regrettably, he's now seriously ill due to liver failure, and my family plans to visit him one last time this week. This situation reminded me of the guy who tried to abduct my brother, as his actions introduced me to the person who has become the most loving and significant in my life. I can't fathom who I'd be without him. To better paint the picture, here's a description of myself at the time of this incident. 5'5", 26 year old woman, medium length hair, curvy, 175 pounds. Three years ago, I was walking home late at night from my friend's house. It was dark at the time. I lived in a rough part of a large city. I've had many sketchy situations that I've gotten myself out of, so I guess I felt sort of invincible, like nothing truly scary could ever happen to me. When I walk alone, I always stay very alert and aware of my surroundings for my own safety just in case. About halfway home and roughly 10 minutes to my apartment, I noticed a van started tailing me. I was used to this since in my city it's very common for a young woman in a rough area to get propositioned for sex. It's embarrassing how desensitized to this I was. I did my usual and crossed the road so that I'll be walking beside the traffic heading in the other direction. I wasn't scared, just annoyed. The van then turned down a side street, then backed onto the road I was on and pulled up to me. At this point, I still wasn't scared. Again, this has happened so many times, and it never mattered if I was wearing something that showed more skin, or if I was wearing a winter coat zipped from just below my chin all the way down to my ankles. That area is notorious for that type of activity. I decided to be firm and told the person sternly, I'm not interested. I noticed there were two men in the van. They looked almost identical and may have been twins or brothers. Both men had a very dark complexion, dark eyes, and short dark hair. The van didn't move. I was super annoyed and crossed the road again to get away. At this point, I figured this would be enough for them to stop following me. They didn't. They kept circling back every time I crossed the road. I've never had to put that much effort into getting a horny pervert to leave me alone. So this is when I started feeling unsafe. They zipped by me at the speed the traffic was flowing in, and I yelled for them to fuck off. I thought it finally worked. It had been three minutes and I hadn't seen the van, so I thought I was in the clear. Just in case, I pulled my phone out and was getting ready to call my sister that I lived with. Just then, the van pulled up to me very quickly and before I could even blink, one of the men jumped out of the van, opened the back door and approached me quickly in an aggressive manner as if he was about to scoop me up and throw me into the vehicle. The traffic in that area is very inconsistent. It was dead, and I imagine that's what they were waiting for. Just as the man was about to place his hands on me, I tilted my phone and said, You are being filmed in my live video chat. I gave my friends your license plate number and the police have been notified. I was so scared, but I didn't let that show. I stayed as calm as I could. The man paused like he was considering if I was bluffing or telling the truth. So I tilted the phone more as if I was giving the fake audience a better look at him. He then jumped into the van and they sped off. I have never been the same since that night. I'm afraid of walking alone now, even in the daytime. Stay safe out there. To the two creeps in that van, let's not ever meet. And I hope karma finds you both soon.